sister? My sister Eileen. What's this doll's house, a kid's show with fairies? It's a well-known classic. Oh. Not since the debut of the... Debut. Debut, okay. Not since the debut of the great Sarah Bernhardt has an audience been held so spellbound as that which witnessed the remarkable performance of Ibsen's A Doll's House by a young Columbus girl, Eileen Sherwood. Huh. Sure pouring it on, ain't you? When did this happen? Oh, it's happening tonight at 8.30. What? Hey, something new. Now they're writing them before they see them. We won't have time to write it after the show. We're having a party tonight at the house for Eileen. A party with the doll? Will you, Scram? Say, I thought the boss's daughter was the star of that thing. That's tomorrow. They're alternating. Tonight, Eileen. Tomorrow, Annie. Here it is, Mr. Hawkins. And here's Eileen's picture. You blow it up big like you promised. Gee, Jerusalem, this blurb for an amateur theatrical. And I want it in every edition, beginning with the one that goes on the streets tonight. What are you trying to do, push the war out of the paper? Oh, you promised me you'd give Eileen a break now, didn't you? Yeah, provided you take care of the boss's daughter tomorrow night. Okay. And just as many adjectives or there'll be trouble. Believe me, I'll do Annie up just fine. Well, see that you do. Leave it to me. I'll give her the works. Two more minutes. Oh. But, George, I still say I should have played the doctor. Hello, you'll have a great day. Oh, great. Oh, oh you wait till you see the crowd outside. And wait till you see the review I've written. It's absolutely marvelous. Where's Eileen? I gotta see her. Oh, oh. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. What's the matter? What happened? We don't know. We were in there, and all of a sudden, Mr. Heller came in with Annie. It looks like dirty work at the crossroads. Dirty work? What kind of oh, dirty hello. work? hello. What happened? There's been a last-minute change. Annie Wilkinson's playing the part tonight. Oh, what? Oh, oh, remember, I said, very, very how late. come? My sister won the toss, didn't she? Yes, but... Yes, but Annie's father owns a newspaper, and he put the pressure on. Quiet, oh, please. No. Oh, quiet. Nothing. I'll tear this place up. Uh, Mr. Heller, you can't do this. It's all settled. What's up? What did I... You're not going Annie, to... Annie, on stage. Oh. Annie. <laughs> Annie! Miss Wilkinson, if you don't mind. We'll get her. Now, folks, for the last three weeks, I've been you telling you... Now, Mother, I want to tell you what's going on, now, and you're folks, not... All of you, you'll have to get out front. Yes, you will try and put us out on the Will you please? 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 Will be on the oh, streets slides. in an hour. Oh, Says you she's are... sensational in the dollhouse. Curtain, curtain. Put pictures in the bed. Hide the Christmas tree carefully. Ellie. Well, there you go. Eileen, are you going to cry all night? Yes. Then take that black stuff off your eyes. It's getting all over the pillow. <laughs> Holy smoke, you're a sight. <laughs> nice piece of writing anyway, Ruth. You're getting better and better. You better frame it, Grandma. That's Tony for me on the courier. Well, I'm the laughing stock of Columbus. That paper's all over town. And everybody knows I didn't play the part. Oh, I'll never be able to show my face in this town. Neither will I, Eileen, if that's any comfort to you. Now, girls, there's nothing we can do about this anyway. Let's get to bed. It's 2 o'clock. Dad, now that I've lost this job, I've always felt that... Ruth, I'm not going to discuss New York all over again. Well, you can get another job right here in Columbus. You can go back to teaching. But she doesn't want to go back to teaching. She wants to write. And she ought to be where magazines and publishers are. Mother, are you encouraging this insanity? Sure. You're just talking a lot of old-fashioned twaddle. What's a girl to do? Sit around home just because it's home till some local dope decides to marry her? Columbus boys are not dopes. Well, I was born and brought up here myself. Oh, now, son, be reasonable. She wants a career, and she's got plenty on the ball. And if she thinks New York's the place to be... Well, certainly it's where Ruth should be. That's where all the publishers are. That's where everybody is. I certainly think we ought to go. You too? Well, naturally, that's where all the theaters are too. What kind of a career can I have around here? Ruth wouldn't think of going without me, would you? Well, of course not. No. No, of course not, Eileen. Dad, there's no reason why she shouldn't go with me. There's I no won't hear of it. We... Won't hear of it. Good night. Girls, you can start packing right after breakfast. Oh, oh Grandma. Grandma. I wonder what those boys at the little theater will think when I'm an actress in New York. Well, it's the advantage of not leaving any men behind. I don't have to worry what becomes of them. I know, dear. It's different with you. 
Boys never met anything in your life. Well, after they got a load of you, they didn't. See, I got more of your junk in there than my own. Eileen, where's my typewriter? Well, it was right there on the desk. Oh, it's gone. Who took it? Grandma! Grandma! What's the matter? My typewriter's miss. Sure. I traded it in. Got in just ahead of that new installment buying law. <laughs> oh. oh, gee, darling. How can I ever repay you? Oh, that's simple. Just write another gong with the wind. It's a cinch. Come on, come on, shake a leg. It's five miles to the bus depot. Oh, darling, can you grab my hat then? Oh, Excuse yes, me, Grandma. Sir. You better hurry if you want to be on that bus. Oh, we have plenty of time. No, we haven't. Oh, Grandma, where'd I put my purse? Oh, how the dickens would I know? Well, let's look for it. Hurry, Eileen. We've got to go clear across town. Don't worry. Uh, Ruth, uh, here are the tickets and $100. Oh, I wish we didn't have to take this. Oh, it's all right. That'll get you started, and then every month or so, whatever I can spare. Oh, thank you, Di, but maybe you won't have to at all. You mustn't worry about it. Where in the world could you have put it? You'll uh, watch over Eileen, won't you? Of course I will. Oh, here it is. Oh, thank you, Grandma. Now, hurry, Eileen. We're late now. We'll never make that bus. Oh, we'll be on it. I've arranged everything. Hello, Harvey. So nice of you to come. Uh did you say watch over Eileen? Eileen, watch over me. <laughs> Hurry up, Ruth. You know Harvey has a schedule to make. Goodbye, Grandma. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Dad. Goodbye, dear. But goodbye, Dad. Right off. I will, darling, yes. Good. Great. I'm going to keep up with your career. I'll be mine all the magazines. Yes, yes, you do that, Grandma. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye, Dad. satisfied, Mother. Happiest day of my life. Taxi? Oh, boy, New York. Take your bag, lady, taxi? Oh, yes, thanks. Oh, no, thanks. Give that right back. Huh? Eileen, we carry our own bags and we carry our own bodies. Now, the first thing we got to do is buy a paper and look up the rooms for rent. Oh, must we do that? Oh, Ruth, let's stop at a hotel and get a nice fresh start in the morning. Eileen, maybe I should have told you earlier. You know this hundred dollars? That's the last money we ever take from Dad. The last? The last. Oh, but supposing... Then we starve. We beg, we borrow, or steal. Darling, is that a promise? Yes, Ruth. All right. Now, we better check the heavy bag and then start looking for the room. Come on. Oh, all right. I think it's foolish to look for anything when our vitalities are so low. Here, you hold this. Things get tough. We can always flop in one of these. Gee, I can't get this key out. We'll try this one, will I you? will not. I got a dime invested in this locker. I'll tear it apart first. Having trouble? <laughs> yes, a little. Well, allow me. Easy does it. Hot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but you'll cool off. Wasn't that nice? Fresh guy. Come on, Eileen. Now you take the overnight case and I'll take the typewriter. Well, this is the last one on the list. Ruth, no matter what it is, if it's got a bed in it, let's take it. She had no idea rents were so high. Doesn't look like much, does it? Good evening. Good evening, my dear young ladies. Am I wrong in presuming that you are looking for a haven in this troubled world? No, no, we're just looking for a room. Seek no more. You have reached your goal. We have? Absolutely. How high up is it? It is not up. It's down. Uh, hey. Follow me, young ladies, and I'll show you the best value for your money you can buy in Greenwich Village. Come in, my dear young ladies. Enter. Isn't it just what you've been dreaming about? Come in, come in. Don't be bashful. Make yourself right at home. Oh, thank you. It's really very nice. Uh, but uh, you see, as yet, we haven't decided whether or not we want to live. Wait. 
nor the exquisite imitation fireplace. And these big, comfortable day beds. Just look at that interesting and exciting dormer window. Look, life passes up and down in front of you like a regular parade. What more could a young person with a typewriter want? Am I wrong in presuming that you are an author? Uh, haven't you anything higher up? Higher up, higher up. My dear young lady, why don't you let me show you the place before you raise a lot of objections? Yes, I Ruth. Do. Let Mr. Uh... Apopoulos. Ap yes. Show us the place. You have a head on your shoulders, young lady. And now let me point out a few features of this beautiful suite. A, it is summer. B, it is at least 30 degrees cooler down here than anywhere higher up. C, it is only $45 a month. $45? Thank you very much, Mr. Apopoulos. We'll let you know. Come on, Eileen. Oh, on. Ruth, couldn't we stay here for a few days? And, and then if we like it, we can... I'll do better than that. You can have the place for a month on trial at absolutely no cost to you. Then, if you are not 100% satisfied, I will give you back your first month's rent. The whole month? The whole month. And August has 31 days. Do you mind if I go outside and talk it over with my sister? What is there to talk over? You see the place, you know the price. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll go down to the bus terminal and pick up our baggage. What for? Why have I got a handyman? Jensen! Jensen! Wait a minute. We haven't decided anything yet. Now I'm going to show you where everything is. And there we have a model kitchenette, complete in every detail. Adjacent is a luxurious bathroom. Uh, they're awfully small. Small? Oh, in those two rooms you won't entertain. And you, young lady, are you artistic and fussy like your sister? Well, I'm going to try to get a job on the stage. Oh, an actress. Well, you certainly have the face and build for it. Oh, thank you. What, Mr. Apopoulos? Oh, Jensen, go to the bus station and get these young ladies' bags. But we haven't said we'd take it. This places you under absolutely no obligations. Oh, no, I'm so tired. <laughs> well, I... When am I going to fix the water pipes? There's been a lot of hollering. Never mind the hollering. There's been no hollering at all. He's crazy. Go ahead. These poor tired girls want to go to bed. And I'll tell you what I'll do. If you take these luxurious rooms, I will leave that painting exactly where it is. Oh, it's charming. Yeah, who did it? Me. Painting is one of my interests. I also write epic poetry and epic drama. Well, ladies, what do you say? The painting stays. Oh, let's take it, Ruth. I can't see what we can lose. Mr. Apopoulos said he would give us our money back. Legally, you have me where you want me. I gave my word in front of two witnesses. Three, including me. Oh, please, Ruth. Um... All right, Eileen. But remember now... Oh, I won't blame you. Don't worry. Ten. 20, 30, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. What was that? What was what? That, that noise. It's just, the whole room shook. <laughs> that just shows you how you'll get used to it. I didn't even notice it. Get used to it? You mean it happens all the time? Uh, you wouldn't even be conscious of it. A little blasting, the new subway. You mean they're blasting right underneath us? What are you worrying about? Those engineers know how much dynamite to use. But does it go on all the time? No, no. They knock off at midnight and they don't start again till six in the morning. Six in the morning? Oh, I can't stay here! Listen, in New York you live either A, over a subway, or B, where they're building a subway, or C, you don't live in New York. Stop double-talking and give us our money back. What are you getting so hysterical about? I said I would give you your money back, and I will. If at the end of the month you are still dissatisfied. Good night, ladies. Sleep tight.
Boy, that Apopolis must be some bingo player. Look at all this stuff he's won. this phone connected in the morning so we can start calling up for jobs. You don't call up for jobs, dear. You go out and look for them. Now oh, the devil with it. Let it spread. Some fresh air gropes its way in here. It's stifling. Didn't I just put out the light? Post right in front of the window. Pull the shade down. There isn't any shade. No shade? Oh, we're practically sleeping out in the street. How do I get that Apopolis? Nice, comfortable day beds. Like sleeping in an iron lung. Would it help any to close the window, Ruth? If we do, we'll suffocate. I'm afraid. You know, a dog could chase a cat through there. He probably will. Well, let's get some sleep. Maybe we can forget. Night, Ruth. Hi, nine. What was that? It sounded like a machine gun. Gee, Ruth, I'm awfully sorry. Forget it. for you two. But that one's mine. Okay. Mine's not so bad. Uh, you go away from there. Hello, cutie pie. Get away, get away, get away. I'm fit as a fiddle and ready for love. Oh. Ruth, close that window. Me? Close the window. Don't you do it, Ruthie. I'd rather see her close it. Ruth, please. Look out behind you. Woo come on, cutie. Come to Papa. You take your hands away from there, I'll bust them off. So oh. what's going on here? Come on, break it up. Break it up. We're just making a social call there. We're just making good night. Come on, get up. Go on. Give me right now. I'm awful glad you came, officer. So you're new in this neighborhood, ain't you? Yeah. 
We just moved in today. Well, if you're smart, you'll move out tomorrow. I like things nice and quiet on my beat. I'm warning you. Did you hear what he said, Eileen? Yes, I did. Ruth, I'm afraid. It'll be all right, darling. Please. Name, Eileen Sherwood, Columbus Little Players. You'll have to wait. Well, I haven't much time, and I'm sure if you told me... Say, to... listen, Toots. <laughs> Columbus Little Players? Say, that's big time. I'm Chick Clark, theatrical reporter on the Globe. Always glad to meet any member of the Columbus Little Players. How about an interview, Miss Sherwood? Why, thank you. Well, let's go over in the corner and talk it over, huh? No, I don't want you to feel self-conscious or hold out on me or worry about a thing. Just tell me all about yourself, huh, sugar? I have the new sketches. Yes, Mr. Kinski, take them to the art department. Uh, I'd like to see anyone. The here manuscript? That... Uh, yes, I want to see Sorry, some of the editors. No appointments with authors, no manuscript accepted here. Mail it in. Mail it, huh? I've been mailing them all my life. Sorry, that's the rule here. Oh, that's all right. I have an appointment with Mr. Craven. I'm sorry, he's busy. You'll have to wait. Thank you. You don't want an editor, you want a rubber stamp. I want circulation. Well, let me alone and I'll get it for you. What do you got there? Let me run the Manhattan for three months, with my policy and without your interference. You're talking to the owner of the Manhattan. And the biggest bottleneck in the whole organization. People don't want it, Frank, all that high-class society rubbish week after week. This is good. Look, let me change the policy slowly, J just as a trial. That's fine, put that Let through. me run one human incident a week, just one, a, a, a story, an article, a poem. And you know exactly what people want. Well, what you want isn't selling. So let's go bankrupt your way. Is that it? On second thought, let's go bankrupt your way. It's much quicker. That's all for today. Go on, get out. Hey, hey you, can you read? Well, of course I can read. Well, do you read? Oh, yes, yes, and I write, too. Here's one of my oh, stories. Oh, never mind about my... writing. Everybody writes in New York, even people who can't read. Well, I happen to be from Columbus. Uh, very interesting. Now, you think carefully. Have you ever read The Manhattan? Huh? Oh, uh, no, no, not in years. Good. I have... Come with me. Uh, that's my... What do you want now? Who's this? Mr. Craven, meet Miss... Uh, what's your name? Sherwood. Ruth Sherwood. Meet Miss Ruth Sherwood. She can read. From Columbus, Ohio, the middle of the universe. Meet Mr. Craven, the owner of all the Craven publications. How do you do? Sherwood, what does she do? I just told you, she can read. Now, Miss Sherwood, in your time, you have read The Manhattan, isn't that true? Yes. When was the last time? Oh, years ago. Years ago? <laughs> why did you stop reading it? Who cares why she stopped reading it? Take her out of here. Why? Well, it, it just didn't interest me. Why not? Well, uh, because... 
Well, there are many more magazines that I liked a lot better. Oh, that's no answer. Can't you explain why? Or, or don't you have any opinion? Opinions from Columbus, Ohio? We think in Columbus, Ohio, too, you know. As a matter of fact, we think your magazine's about 15 years behind the times. Go on, go on. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, yes, we do. People used to go for all that she-she and fakey talk. They didn't know any better. But life's become a lot more real now. Oh, has it? Yes, yes, it has. People are aware of things. We have radio now and movies, and we're right in the middle of the war. When you come up against cold, hard facts, the phony things are shown up pretty quick. The Manhattan, uh, that's, that's just a, a bore, not only to Columbus, Ohio, but to 90% of the nation. Thank you, Miss Sherwood. Wait a minute. Where did you find this girl? Just outside. What was she doing there? Miss Sherwood, the gentleman is trying to make a point of some kind. Tell him, tell us all, what were you doing out there? I was uh, trying to submit a manuscript. To which one of my magazines? The Manhattan. <laughs> that's all I want to know. Your guinea pig slams the Manhattan, but you'd like her material published in it. Well, now, wait just one Good minute. Good day, Miss Columbus. Mr. Baker will pay you off outside. Well, if you'd like to know the truth, I came to the Manhattan in desperation. It was the last magazine I could think of. Well, what do you know? And now that I've met the brains of the organization, I'm sorry I came at all. Oh, down, please. Where'd that girl go? She just went down the elevator. Ruth Show, 233 Barrow Street. Strawberries, 10 cents a box. Strawberries, 10 cents a box. Oh. I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech. Get out of here. Cutty must have moved her clothesline. You're one of the new girls, huh? Uh -huh. My name's Loomis. My wife and I live upstairs. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Loomis? Oh, leave out the mister. Just call me Wreck. Wreck? Yeah, that's what they call me, Georgia Tech. I'd have made all American, only uh, I was expelled. Uh -huh. uh, is your sister home? Oh, I expect her any minute now. Oh, well, that's swell, because my wife and I have got something we want to talk over with you. Mm-hmm. Spaghetti meatballs, huh? Mm -hmm. I smell them coming by yesterday. Oh, they taste a lot better the second day. Sure. Say, you know, some night we all get together, I'll cook you up a dinner. Anything you want. Pot roast, leg of lamb, shrimps, creole. Gee, your wife's a mighty lucky girl. Oh, I don't know. If I had a job, she'd keep house for me. Well, we'll be down a little later and talk it over, because we got no by tonight. No what? Watch me nail this guy. I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a heck of an engineer. Get out of here, you ragged muffins. I know where you can put that. Are you there, Eileen? Oh, hello, Ruth. Any luck? Oh, terrific. I met an editor and the owner of a whole magazine chain. Why, Ruth, you're in. Yeah, they got me in to throw me out. What about you? Oh, I had the most exciting day. I was in the outer waiting room of Wallace Productions. Oh, you're getting someplace. Mm-hmm. And I met this man, uh, Mr. Clark, newspaper man in the Globe. And what do you think? What? He interviewed me. But did you get in to see Mr. Wallace, dear? Well, no, but don't you see, if I wait till this interview comes out, Mr. Wallace will come to see me. And uh, so will all the other producers. <laughs> that was Mr. Clark's advice, I gather. Oh, and I told him all about you, and he seemed very interested. So interested in me, he can't wait to get you alone, huh? Oh, don't be silly. He's going to speak to a city editor about you. Well, from here on, it's clear sailing. What have we got for dinner? Mm, spaghetti and meatballs. Haven't we polished that off yet? Hello, young ladies. How is everything? What do you hear from your other tenants? <laughs> hey, 
those are my manuscripts. This is more important. What about the shades of that window? Please, not until after my exhibit. I'm giving a one-man show on my paintings. A complete exhibition of the art of Apopolis. Complete, from A to B, huh? I'm warning you, I'm taking that painting in a few days, so prepare yourselves. Oh, we'll hang the Sunday funnies up there. Oh, you must forgive Eileen, Mr. Apopolis. I keep telling her not to confuse the artist with his personality. <laughs> but she still thinks you're a jerk. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose it is a result of the general royal hysteria. Good day, young ladies. Keep writing, keep acting. Where art is concerned, don't never give up. Keep writing, keep acting. He certainly knows just where to plunge the knife. Oh, Ruth, mm. we ought to have something for dessert. Your dress, would you go down to the bakery? Oh, let's skip dessert, dear. Oh, but we can't, dear. There's a man coming for dinner. Who? What man? Frank Lippincott. Now, who is Frank Lippincott? Oh, didn't I tell you about that boy who manages the National Drug Store on 44th Street? No. Oh, Frank's a very nice boy. He didn't let me pay my lunch check. Eileen, why don't you wander into the Ritz someday? And I wanted you to meet him, Ruth, so when you're in the neighborhood, you can have your lunch there, too. Mm. I have a feeling that before long, that drugstore is going to be under new management. Oh, don't be silly. As long as you're going, Ruth, you might just as well cash in these six milk bottles. You know, it's wonderful the way you manage with only one maid. Oh. Yes? Hello. Yes? Hot, isn't it? Effie home? I'm afraid you've got the wrong apartment. Oh, that's all right. I know Effie very well. Well, I don't. Uh, now, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to call the police. Oh, they won't put me out. I'm an air raid warden. All right. You ask for it. Now you're going to get it. Mr. Loomis! Mr. Loomis! Mr. Loomis! How do you do? How do you do? Hot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, I hope you don't mind spaghetti and meatballs. Love it. Would you mind getting me a glass of water? Not at all. It's a pleasure. Now, we'll soon see, Mr. Smarty. I'm afraid it's not very cold. Don't give him anything. Huh? He's nobody. You mean he's not the drugstore? No, of course not. Then who is he? I don't know. He just walked in. He won't go away. Make him go away, Ruth. Now, you go away. No. Be careful. He's an air raid warden. Where's his sand and shovel? I don't care what he is. You get out of here and stop bothering my sister. Go on. No. What's the trouble, girls? This uh, man walked in here and he won't go away. Hey, what's the idea of crashing in on these girls? Now, don't get yourself excited. It's just a mistake. You bet it's a mistake. Now get moving. Very well. Good afternoon. You're the hairiest landlady I ever saw. Why, you bitch! Oh, thank you, Mr. Loomis. I don't know what we would have done. Oh, well, that's all right. <laughs> Helen! Oh, Helen! Eileen? Are you sure you never met that man before? Oh, don't be silly. He was looking for a girl named Effie. Mm. Say, Rick, is there a nephew in this place? Oh, well, there used to be. She used to live in a studio before you girls moved in. She was some kind of a medium. Used to give psychic readings or something. I hope she didn't leave any trumpets or tambourines floating around. <laughs> what happened, Rick? Well, everything's all right, honey. Girls, this is my wife. How do you do? Oh, how do you do? Have you asked the girls about it yet, dear? Oh, well, not yet, baby. Well, there isn't much time, and we've got to get it settled. Yeah. Well, you see, it's like this. Helen's mother's gonna visit her, and which kind of straight arms me right out into the alley. Haven't you enough room? Well, we could make room. Only, you see, uh, Helen's mother doesn't know that we're married. And I'm afraid to tell her, because the wreck isn't working now. But I start to work just as soon as the professional football season opens. So, 
we thought that in the meantime, uh, you two girls wouldn't mind putting me up in your kitchen. <laughs> what? You mean sleep in our kitchen? Oh, he won't be in your way, really. You'd feel a lot safer with the wreck around, and he's awfully handy. Why, he can clean up any iron swell. Yeah, but no washing. That's woman's work. But, but uh, you see, uh, 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 what about a hotel? We haven't got a cent. No. Well, maybe we could do it for one night. Hey, wait a minute. We're crowded enough as it is. Oh, thank you, girls. You don't know how much you're helping us. Oh, well, gee, that's swell. I'll get my stuff together right away. I know, but Thanks you again, see... girls. Something tells me you weren't quite ready to leave Columbus. Oh, that must be Frank. Let him in, will you, Ruth? I've got to change my dress. What's that guy's last name again? Lippincott. Lippincott. And remember, Ruth, he's a very nice boy. Please be careful. Who am I, Tugboat Annie? Come in. Gee, I... I'm sorry, I... I... No, well, that's right. all right. Everybody does that. You're Mr. Lippincott. Yes. Yeah, and I guess you're Eileen's sister. Uh-huh. Oh, I can see a family resemblance, oh, all right. I'm very flattered. Of course, you're a different type. Yeah, I see what you mean. Oh, uh, do sit down, Mr. Lippincott. Dear sister's just freshening up a bit. She'll be out in a minute. <laughs> Oh, Ruth. Oh, uh, yes, sister. What is it, dear? I'll be out in a minute. You see, I wasn't lying. <laughs> Eileen's been telling me about your drugstore. Oh, has she? I understand you have awfully good food. Oh, it's the best. And very reasonable. Mm, reasonable isn't the word, as I understand it. What? Huh? Why, Frank, I'm so sorry. Oh, that's all right. Your sister and I had a nice little talk. Oh, uh, yes, you'd have been proud of me, dear. I didn't make one slip, did I, Mr. Lippincott? What? Uh, may I take your hat? Oh, thanks. Oh, this is for you. Oh, Frank, you shouldn't have done that. It's some California red wine. I, I thought it'd go good with the spaghetti. <laughs> it's a special we're running this week. So is our spaghetti. Huh? Oh, I, I bet you're just famished. Dinner's almost ready. Say, this is great. You know, I've always wanted to live in a studio like this. <laughs> well, I, I'd better set the table. Well, do, do you mind if I help you? Why, Frank, how nice. <laughs> Hello. Well, what do you want? I'm looking for a party named, uh... Sherwood. Eleanor Sherwood. You mean Eileen? Yeah, yeah, come to think of it, Eileen. What a day. Absolute murder, ain't it? And uh, who shall I say is calling? Clark. Chick Clark's the name. Oh, the newspaper man. How does it look? I knew it looks good. Who are you? Well, I, I'm her sister. Sister? She's a blonde, good-looking kid, ain't she? Yeah, she's a blonde, good-looking kid, ain't she? Oh, uh, Mr. Lippincott, this is Mr. Clark. How do you do? How are you? Mr. Lippincott is with the National Drug Stores. Yeah? I buy all my clothes there. Oh, quite a card, aren't you, Mr. Clark? <laughs> this wine looks heavily, Frank. Why, hello, Mr. Clark. Hi, Eleanor. I got some great news for you. The boss says we run the interview this week. Columbus Girl, just busting with talent, will consider parts in better Broadway productions. Why, Chick, I mean, Mr. Clark, why, that's just wonderful. <laughs> oh, Ruth, uh, this is the newspaper man who was so interested in you. 
<laughs> Ruth uh, wants to do newspaper work, Frank, and, and Mr. Clark's going to help her. That's nice. I sure am. Gorgeous. <laughs> You know, I've been turning you over in my mind all afternoon. Uh, well, we're just about to have dinner. I've had mine. Go right ahead, don't mind me. I don't think it'll be very amusing for you, Mr. Clark. Uh, what's in the bottle? Oh, it's a very fine California burgundy type wine. It's a special. <laughs> well, let's all have a drink, shall we? Do we need any ice? No, no, no. This wine should be served at the temperature of the room. Well, then you better cook it for a couple of hours. Now, why don't you come back when the new subway's finished? We expect a draft in through here all day long. Miss Sherwood. Thank you. Mr. Clark. No, no, no thanks. I, I, I'll skip this round. Well, here's to us and to Burgundy, California. to get up here. Take your hands off me, you big slug. Now, what do you think you're doing running around in your drawers? Will you tell this big clown I'm OK? Uh, yes, he's all right, I hope. Well, I found him out in the alley with all those bedclothes. I think he's some kind of a fiend. Oh, you're crazy. I'm going to live here. Live here? In the kitchen. It's all right, officer. We know him. It's you two. I thought I warned you to move out of my beat. Why, how dare you? Wait a minute. You? Yes, Officer, I don't know what you think, but if it's what I think you think, you're sniffing up the wrong tree. Yeah, see here, officer. And who do you think you are? I'll tell you who I oh, am. stop it. Who cares who anybody is? What's the difference? Anybody walks in here. Everybody walks in here. I... I'm Dormina Troshin Blini. She passed out. Now, who's that? It's Effie. Effie? <laughs> She's early tonight. Well, wait a minute. Take that out of here. She doesn't live here. Please. This is not the first time I take her home. Good night. Well, for a place with a bad location and no neon sign, we're doing a whale of a business. Now, who's that? Mr. Baker. Oh, good evening, Miss Sherwood. I read your material. I'd like to discuss it. What did you say? I said I read your material. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ruth! Oh, oh she's fainted! Ruth! Oh, rub her hands. Oh, Ruth! You feel all right now? Oh, sure. Where are we going? Oh, someplace we can talk. We certainly couldn't do it back there. Holy smoke, you live in a menagerie. Who are all those people? Well, they seem look to look like just a three drop... ring circus. How long have you lived in that place? Well, now, let me see. That certainly is about... the black hole of Calcutta. Who was that guy with the wine all over his suit? Oh, a friend of mine. And sister, say, what do you mean by running out of my office today like that? Hey, come on, answer me. You don't seem to wait for an answer, Mr. Baker. Oh, don't I? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm apt to do that when I've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> look, uh, I hope you don't mind my rushing away like oh, that. Oh, no, not at all. It we were just about to sit down to dinner when all of oh, a sudden these people well, came in. Why don't you speak well, up? So am I. Driver, corner of 3rd Avenue and 43rd. Yes, sir. That's the best food you've ever had in your life. Really? They make a dish there that's fit for kings. <laughs> Spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> You'll never know what you did for me today. What a guinea pig you turned out to be. <laughs> yeah, great, isn't it? Uh-huh. Can't eat this stuff too often, though. Makes you fat. I shouldn't wonder. Mmm. 
What an earful you gave the boss. Beautiful. But a girl from the backwoods, you're pretty shrewd. Where do you get all that sense? Well, Grandma, you Well, what's the that. difference? You've got it. You know, I've been having this fight with Craven on policy for years, all alone. And then you come along and state the case better than I did myself. You really know what I'm driving at. I tell you, I've been a pretty lonely man up to this minute, but I feel I can talk to you. Look, I need advice. What do you think I ought to do? Well, offhand, Let me I tell you what's been going on with Craven ever since I took this job. Uh, here. Uh, yeah, what's the matter? Have, have you had enough? Uh, you did read my stories, didn't you? What? Uh, yeah, yes, I told you did. I left them in the office. Um, now, uh, yeah, what was that? What, uh, what was that point I was trying to make? Oh, uh, you were saying something oh, gee, I can't talk Craven. against that music. Come on, let's get out of here, shall we? Wait up. Check, please. All right. Let's take care of it. What did I tell you? Best food in town. Don't misunderstand me. Craven's a nice guy outside the office. You wouldn't know him. But the moment he gets down there, he's a bullhead. Talk, talk, talk all the time. Never hears what you have to say. Uh, people like that drive you crazy, don't they? Yep. <gasps> Kills me. I tried to tell him that the first requisite of a modern magazine is to keep up with the times, with the changing customs and speech. I don't just mean of sophisticated New York. I mean of the whole country, of every state in the Union, of Maine and Texas and... Ohio? And Ohio. Columbus, Ohio? Yeah, sure, sure. Why in not? other words, if you were to read stories written in Columbus, about Columbus, I mean, if you thought they were good stories... Why, I'd print them, naturally. That's just what I'm talking about. That's what the Manhattan should be like. Say, aren't you getting tired of this bus? Not the bus so much. Me too. Let's get up and walk. No, I'm not gonna quit. Anybody can walk out, that's easy. But I'm gonna stay and fight Craven to a finish. Here, here, wait a second, I'm not through yet. Come and sit down. You see, there's a thrill to this job if I can do what I want. Work on stories that are alive and help authors with talent to dig those stories out. What do you think? I think it's just fine, Mr. Baker. And I also think it's after 3 o'clock. And if I ever come across the kind of author you're looking for, I'll let you know. Good night. Hey, wait a second. What for? I can't even get a word in edgewise. I can't seem to remind you that I'm an author and that I've written some stories about Columbus, remember? Sure, and I read them. Yeah, it took till 3.30 in the morning to find out they aren't even worth mentioning. What are you talking about? They're good. They are? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, didn't I? No. Well, I'm telling you now, they're quite good. Oh, just quite good. Well, isn't that enough? You mean if you could publish them, you wouldn't? No, I wouldn't. Oh, the people come off, but the stories are flat. They, they don't get anywhere. Nothing happens. Ah, that's because not enough happens to you. Oh, it doesn't, eh? That's what I said. Why, you can't lead a quiet, sheltered life. Quiet? Sheltered? Down in that tunnel with subway blasts bouncing me all over the bed? And, and Apopolis, our Rasputin landlord, and Eileen dragging home newspaper geniuses and drugstore Romeos and anything else she happens to meet up with during the day? And, and football players drifting through in, the, in their drawers? And odd callers looking for good old Effie, not to mention the rest of the world, snooping through the window as over I some kind of a public home. exhibition? Shut up! You say sheltered? That's it. That's exactly the stuff. Well, go on, write it. Write what? Well, about all those people. Start your story in Columbus, bring it to New York. Write about Rasputin, Arlene, the Blast, the Menagerie. Gee, it's wonderful. <laughs> Why, many an author give his right hand for material like that. I tell you what you mean. Of course, of course I'm going to do it. Well, we're going to have it. I don't know. I'm going to work right now. You better go home before you get to Good night. Good night. Good night. Ah, shut up. Where do you think this is? Grand Central Station? Is that you, Ruth? Yes, dear. Well, what's all that noise out there? Nothing, just me. Well, what time is it? 3.30. You were out with a man. Uh-huh. And you've had no experience with men. Isn't it awful? Aren't you ashamed? And you were supposed to take care of me. Oh, I mean, I love New York. I love everything about it. I like the air. I like... I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a heck of an engineer. A heck of 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 an engineer. For I'm a jolly good fellow and I like my whiskey. Mm. I'm a rambling wreck from Georgia Tech and a heck of an engineer. You must get pretty plastered after a day's ironing. Well, but I don't touch a drop after the football season starts. Is that all you do, play football? Well, I tried breaking into the wrestling racket, but you got to rehearse so darn much. Which way do you want these pleats turned? Towards Mecca. Well, there it is. 
All finished. You know, I got a swell story you ought to write. How Helen and me met and got married. I had a job peddling vacuum cleaners. My first day out, my first client was Helen. Well, <laughs> started to give her a demonstration, and before either one of us realized it, we were in love. I never did get back to the office. Well, what happened to the vacuum cleaner? Oh, it's upstairs. We still hear it from the company. That'd make a great story, Rick. Oh, tell Eileen I've gone up to see Mr. Baker. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Okay. Oh, Rick, you said you'd only be here a couple of nights. That means you've got to get out tonight. Yeah, I know, Ruth, but the old lady didn't arrive on schedule. Sorry, Rick, but I need this place to work in. I'm afraid that's final. Yeah, but she's liable to blow in any minute. Oh. What are you looking at, you old Beazel? Oh! I wrote it in an awful hurry. There are still lots of things I could do with it. Nothing that I could see. Terrible, huh? No, it's great. As far as I'm concerned, it's in the next issue. And Mr. Craven will have read it in a half hour. You wait here. You know, you're quite a gal. I like you very much. had it over an hour. No, no, don't you worry. He's a slow reader. Sit down and relax. Say, hey, where's that Sherwood contract? In a few minutes, Mr. Baker. Gee, I've never signed a contract before. He might not like the story. <laughs> Come here. Look, here's the layout of the next issue. I want to show you where your story will go. Oh, oh, wait. I meant to tell you, I don't like the title. I don't like it either. Well, we've got to get another one. Well, I have thought of some others. Like what? Well. It all seems to hinge on Eileen. Huh? I mean, she's in it so much that I thought of simply calling it... Uh... My sister Eileen? Yes, yes, that's it. Might be good. It might be perfect. Let's see what it looks like. My sister... No. I... Oh, sorry to intrude. Intrude nothing. We were waiting for you. Nice job. I didn't think Columbus had a dinner. What did I tell you? It's a magnificent job. Yes. She ought to be able to sell that. Somewhere. What? Why the dickens do you think I asked you to read it? Because you want to put it in the Manhattan. But it's not the type of material for our policy. I thought we settled that. No, we haven't. As a matter of fact, you and I are going to have a showdown on policy right now, oh, Frank. Oh, no, please. Why? Because this happens to be Miss Sherwood's story? What are you talking about? No, because it happens to be the finest thing of its kind I've ever read, but the wrong kind. Look, Frank, either that story goes in our next issue or I quit. Oh, no, that's absurd, Mr. Baker. Well, I guess I'll have to accept your resignation, Bob. Good. But not until that issue's off the press. Unless you don't care about another job in the publishing business. Thanks for letting me see your delightful story, Miss Sherwood. Sure, what contract, Mr. Baker? Oh. I don't think we'll need this now. What's the matter, honey? Oh, it's Mother. She saw you. She said she happened to glance in the window and a naked man cursed at her. Y you mean that old wagon is your mother? She'll come down here and accuse the girls, and they're liable to tell her about us. Oh, not them. They're too regular. Especially that Eileen, huh? Well, anyhow, I can't stay here anymore. Ruth told me I had to get out by the night. Oh, but I'll tackle Eileen. She's a soft touch. You stay away from that Eileen. Well, all right, then. Where do you want me to sleep? Oh, well, if we could only scrape up a few dollars, you could stay at the Y until Mother leaves. 
Maybe we could hawk something. Yeah. That's an idea. Oh, Rick, do you think you should? Shh, quiet. They won't lend you a dime on that. Yeah, but this gold frame might be worth a couple of bucks. There. The room looks a lot better without it already. I'll hide it out in the back alley until later. Rick! You're so ingenious. Lucky you. Hello, Helen. Where's the wreck? He's around, like always. Gee, the laundry looks swell. It was awfully sweet of him. Look. It was a pleasure, Eileen. <laughs> Isn't it too bad the wreck's leaving today? You're gonna miss him. Yes, we will. He's certainly a handy man to have around the house. You don't have to tell me the wreck's good points. I suppose I should thank you for giving him back to me at all. Oh, you're crazy, Helen. Well, I'll be darned. Why, why you ungrateful little... A little snip's the word you're reaching for, darling. Well, this is the end. Now, you take that Georgia peach of yours out of here and don't ever come back. That's exactly what we'll do. Come on, Rex. Oh, you're all wrong, Helen. Why, if I ever even thought about Eileen in that way, may I be struck dead on this spot? It was a close call, Rex. Are you in there? Mother. That's the man. What are you doing associating with these horrible people? Oh, well, now, just a minute. If you dare to address me, I'll call the police. You get upstairs. Hello, Helen. Doesn't anybody knock around here? Hello, girls. I'm Effie. I dropped in on you the other night. Remember? Hiya, muscle bone. Hey, how are you two lovebirds? What? What did you say? Helen. <laughs> no, no, Mother. We're married. To that? See here. Shut up. Upstairs. <laughs> I want to wait until Mother's Day and then sock her. Well, did I talk out of turn? Oh, no, no, no. You just added a little pleasant excitement to the day. Say, have I had any callers since you kids moved in here? One or two. I thought so. Oh, Eileen, will you put the clothes away, dear? Yes. Well, in case they come around, would you mind giving them my new cards? Psychic readings, huh? You ought to leave some of those at the Russian Blini. What do you two kids do to earn a living? That is, when you can find it. Well, I act, and, and my sister writes. When we can find it. Say, they're crying for your type in musical shows. I got loads of contacts. Oh, really? Uh, uh, that's not my sister's line. Uh, thanks, just the same. OK. OK. Well, kids, bonjour. Sure you left enough cards? Uh, temporarily. So long. She's really an awfully nice girl. Yeah, the spiritual type. Well, what happened today? You didn't get into anybody's inside waiting room, did you? No, I was at the food show. What are they casting at the food show? Well, I saw a lot of people uh, coming out with big bags of samples. So I, I thought we might as well have some, too. We've got enough junk here for a week. Look. Vita kernels. Zippies. Ruffo. Nature's broom. <laughs> Gonna have breakfast all day long. Oh, but it's good for you. It's roughage. I like to vary it with a little smoothage, like a steak. Oh, I forgot. Frank and I are friends again. I explained everything. Who'd you tell him Effie was, our fairy godmother? Gee, I had a swell lunch. I had tomato juice, a pimento and olive sandwich, a tuna surprise, a giant double malt with marble cake. That's right, dear. Keep your strength up. You're eating for two now. Well, it's a funny thing, Ruth. You don't seem to be losing any weight. 
How can I on potatoes, bread, and spaghetti? I'm starving all day long, and I keep getting fatter. I think I'll go on a diet of nature's broom. Delicious with strawberries and cream. <laughs> what isn't? You know, I wouldn't mind this place or chiseling our meals or, or anything if I only thought it was getting us somewhere. Ruth, you, is, do you think we ought to go home for a little vacation? No. I think we ought to stay right here and do a little work. You remember, darling, if at first you don't succeed, it's simple. You just tackle it again. You write 50 million words and then 100 million words after that. Some of them are bound to fall together right, if only by the law of averages. Well, we certainly can wire father before starving to death. No, we can't. We took an oath on that, remember? Now, I want a little quiet around here. You can start by bolting the front door. Yes, Ruth. Congratulate me, young ladies. Today is the big day. Tonight, my one-man show opens. I have come to take my pet. What, what kind of funny game goes on here? Where's my painting? Didn't you take it? I didn't even notice it was gone. Do not bother to give me a cock and bull story. What have you done with it? Boy, it must have been stolen. Maybe it was the same gang that swiped the Mona Lisa. If you didn't take it, who did? You know everybody who comes into this apartment. We don't even know half of them, including you. My dear lady, that painting was the last existing canvas of my blue-green period. What happened to the others, termites? That's your last word? Termites. That's all I want to know. Didn't even notice it was gone. Ah! Ruth, I wonder who could have taken that thing. There must be an idiot sneak thief in the neighborhood. Now, Eileen, bolt that back door. Oh, the lock's broken. Oh. Oh, what's the matter, Ruth? You look terribly down. Didn't you finish your story? Yeah, it's finished. It was great. I was famous. The world was dangling contracts in front of me by the thousands. We were just rolling in money. Then Mr. Craven woke me up. The story was thrown out. Mr. Baker fought for it and was fired. Oh, Ruth. It's bad enough to feel you can't write your own name, but it's on account of my stuff that Bob Baker's life is turned inside out. I'm a jinx besides. Oh, gee, Ruth. If you start feeling that way, who's going to hold me up? I'm not worried about you, Eileen. Not while there's a man alive. Oh, but after all, men are only an escape. Comes another escape. Sherwood residence. Miss Ruth Sherwood. For me? Who's calling? What? Huh? What? Yes, yes, she's here. Sure. Just a minute. Wait a second. Ruth, this chick clock's paper. Hello? Yes. Yes, this is she. Her. She. What? Yes, Mr. Baines. Yes, Mr. Baines. Oh, thank you, Mr. Ba thank you, Mr. Baines. Oh, uh, yes. Yes, of course. Paper and pencil, quick. What is it? What happened? Hurry, hurry, hurry. Uh, yes, yes, I'm ready, Mr. Baines. Sands. Sand Street, Brooklyn. Yes. Oh, sure. Sure, I understand. Yes. Right away, Mr. Baines. I can't believe it. What is it? What do you want? They're going to give me a chance to show what I can do. I got an assignment over in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? What happened over there? A merchant marine, a Portuguese ship with a load of young cadets. I got to do a human interest story. Well, you're not going over there with the runner stocking. Come on back and take it all. Oh, this is the pardon from the governor. We're saved by the bell, Eileen. I guess Chick Clark was some good after all. Yeah, I guess I owe Mr. Clark an apology. <laughs> I always thought he was just trying to get around you. I still think so. What do they pay reporters? Well, whatever it is, it's more we're living on now. Oh, paper. Oh, dear, the address. Oh, paper. What's that? Paper pants. Oh. oh, here's 67. Sand Street, paper. Bye, Eileen. Take care of everything. Good luck, Ruth. Oh, Eileen. Well, where is Brooklyn? You can't miss it. That's a help. Where are you, Eleanor? Chick, how did you get in here? Oh, your back door lock's busted. 
Yes. Yes, I know. Oh, you scared me to death. Oh, take it easy, sugar. I happen to see Ruth ducking down the subway, and I says, maybe Eleanor's alone. Yes, she was uh, on her way to Brooklyn. Oh, Chick, I, I want to thank you for getting Ruth that assignment with Mr. Baines and everything. Ah, oh, forget it. Now let's get your future straightened out. Well, I, I've been waiting for that interview to be published, Chick. This week, sugar. Thanks. Well, you, you'd better go now. You'll excuse me, won't you? Excuse you? After I went and fixed it to get you alone without that eagle-eyed sister of yours around? It wasn't the editor. It was you. You sent Ruth over to Brooklyn on a wild goose chase. Wild goose chase? Nothing. It was one of the other boys' assignments, and I just switched things around a little. What kind of a heel do you think I am, sugar? But how will the editor ever know that Ruth wrote it? Maybe he won't, but it's darn good experience for her. You ought to be ashamed. She was so excited. Oh, how am I going to tell her? Now, don't get tragic, Eleanor. Oh, you get out of here. Now, that's a silly attitude to take after all I tried to do for that sister of yours. Go away. Take your hands off me. Stop playing coy, sugar. Stop it, please. Come in. Oh, Mr. Baker. Oh. And now, Mr. Clark, will you please get out? All you got to do is the lady asks, Mr. Clark. Sure. It's a little hot for wrestling anyway. I look forward to the day when the Bronx Express runs right through this room. Oh, Mr. Baker. Well, uh, you're all right. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Hey, hey, come on, come and sit down. Uh, that's a girl. Everything's fine now, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes, thank you. You came to see Ruth, didn't you? Uh, oh, oh, yes, where is she? Oh, that chick Clark sent her a fake newspaper assignment to Brooklyn. The sneak. She's really having a bad day. Because your sister can write. I always thought so. But then she thinks I can act. Oh, that's right, too. Ruth told me you were an actress. Oh, yes, I want to be. If I can ever get in a producer's office. Well, that shouldn't be too difficult. I'll see if I can arrange something. Oh, if you only could. But I wouldn't want you to go to any trouble, Mr. Baker, after you've taken such an interest in Ruth. Let's uh, take an interest in the family. Oh, Ruth was right, Mr. Baker. Why, you're the nicest person I've met in New York, too. And you know, the things they say about New York aren't true at all. <laughs> Why, everybody's been just lovely to me. Well, I think I can understand that. Can you, Bob? Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry about what happened to you and your job. Ruth told me all about it. Yeah, isn't it great? Why, I haven't felt so lighthearted since I was a kid. Do you know what I had in mind when I came calling today? A celebration. Oh, uh, you mean with Ruth? Oh, uh, yes, but uh, why not with both the Sherwoods? A Sherwood sister on each arm would be swell. What do you say to a theater and a nightclub supper, eh? Oh, Mr. Baker. <laughs> Fine, well, I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. Uh -huh. Look, uh, you sure you're OK? I mean, you're not frightened of being left alone. Oh, or... no, that won't happen again. <laughs> Good, 8 o'clock, then. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Pavlos. I suppose you know absolutely nothing about this pawn ticket and how it was Sub Rosa slipped under my door. Pawn ticket? One gilt frame, one dollar and 25 cents. Yes. For my painting, nothing. Morons. Philistines. Oh, you're absolutely right, Mr. Pavlos. But what does the pawnbroker know about art? Especially yours. That is true. I am a fool to get excited. In the whole world, not more than 15 people know what I am trying to say. And you, my dear Miss Sherwood, are one of them. Yes, yes, naturally. You know something? As tenant to landlord, we have had our differences. But as person to person, I think we could understand each other. What? You too? Miss Sherwood, Eileen, you are a both beautiful and desirable young lady. From the first night you came here, I admired you. Not only for your charming build and wholesome personality. Yeah, well, we'll talk it over sometime. Women have never played a disturbing role in my life. I am creative enough without women. I can express myself. Please, Miss Sherwood, stand still while I'm talking to you. <sighs> Mr. Apopolis, I must ask you to leave. Leave? At a time like this? Oh, this, this is against the law. You've got to leave when another person tells you to. There is a higher law, the law of the jungle.
You struck me. You bet I struck you. And if you don't get out of here, I'm going to call the police. I assure you, my dear young lady, that will not be necessary. I should have known better. Life is for idiots. A man like me in this position. Believe me, the gods must be laughing indeed. <laughs> Post, how do you say get the Dickens out of here in Portuguese? Eu gosto de Nova York. Eu gosto de Brooklyn. You mean they don't speak any English at all? Not a word. Go. Leave. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> linda Pequena. Si, sí, Linda. What'd you bring him here for? I uh, bring him. Uh, They've been on my tail ever since I left the Brooklyn docks. There were half a dozen more of them when we started, but they got lost in the subway. Juan, es ahí el mismo bellísimo. What do they want anyway? What do you think they want? Que lugar engraçado. Más es pequeño, son bonitas. Son muy bonitas. We've got to get them out of here. Suppose you take a crack at it. Uh, go away, go away, boys, please. Yeah, si mesmo. <laughs> Look, boys, uh, go back to your boat. You know, boat? Admiral Sherwood, I presume. What are we going to do? I guess we're going to just stand here grinning at each other until they learn to speak English. Look, boys, I have a date. You know, eat, eat. Oh, oh, oh we got it. Don't do that. They think you're asking him to stay to dinner. Oh. Uh, sick, sick, very sick, very sick. Oh. 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 Vamos a posta. What are they tossing for? I got a hunch it's not me. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Minha querida prima americana, ganhei você. Eu a tenho admirado toda a noite. Dar-me a grande prazer que se jantasse comigo esta noite. <laughs> no, I don't know what you want. Performance. Bernhardt couldn't have done better. <laughs> well, stop grinning at me like that. <laughs> La Conga! La Conga!
Sergeant. That's just an innocent girl from Columbus, Ohio. She's never seen a jail in her life. This'll positively kill her. Why don't you put me in there? I started the whole thing. She was leading the riot. Yes, I know. But let me see her, will you please? She, she must be scared to death in there. She must be half out of her mind. Okay, Ed. Thank you. Come on now, Eileen. Open your mouth. Don't you do it, Eileen. Don't say a word till we get a lawyer. Why, Ruth? Hello. What are they doing to you, darling? Feeding me ice cream. Isn't that nice of the boys? Oh, boys, meet my sister, Ruth. Ruth is Mr. Murphy, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Griswold. Hi, Hi Ruth. Ruth. Have some ice cream? No, 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 thank you. Say, Murphy, can I step in the corner? Why, certainly. Give me the keys, Murphy. Yeah, Murphy. Go away, go away. Hold this. Uh, there we are. Aren't frightening at all. In fact, they're just about the nicest men I ever met. Eileen, you're sure you're all right? All right? Well, of course. Oh, Ruth, isn't it fascinating? Just think, Eileen Sherwood in jail. I was just telling the boys, you know, for an actress, this is very valuable experience. Of course, we didn't have enough experience. Ruth. Oh, Mr. Baker. Oh, Bob. It was terribly nice of you to come. Oh, no, at all. Came as fast as I could, Ruth. I, I didn't know you knew Eileen. Well, he certainly does. We had a delightful talk this afternoon. Yeah. We were all going out to dinner, you know. Oh, Bob, I want you to meet the boys. Come on. Mm -hmm. Bob, this is Mr. Murphy, Mr. Griswold, and Mr. Jackson. Hi. Uh, Hi. Hello, boys. Uh, look, Eileen, I don't want you to worry, but I'm afraid the news is not too good. I did some phoning about this, and it seems there are peculiar ramifications. What kind of ramifications? Well, it seems that Washington wants Eileen Hell. Washington? D.C.? Yes, something about foreign relations, the Portuguese merchant Oh, marine... my gosh, what if Dad hears about this? We've got to get a lawyer. Oh, no, it's only a technicality. I'm sure they'll iron it out in a few hours. But I'm afraid Eileen has to spend the night in jail. The night? Well, what do you know? That's terrific. Oh, no, Fine. she can't do that, darling. This is horrible for you. Well, now, Ruth, if I have to, I have oh, to. Well, what? Ruth, we'll get her out of here first thing in the morning. Sure, everything's gonna be fine. We'll take care of it. Now, her. darling, I'm going to be nice and comfortable here. You run along. And thank you, Bob, for everything you've done. I will see you in the morning, won't yes, I? Yes, yes, of course. <laughs> Good night, Ruth, dear. Good night, darling. Well, boys, you can lock me up now. <laughs> Come on, Ruth. We better go. I'm sorry I can't see you home, but I've got something very important to do at the office. Here, you take my cab. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Well, thank you, and good night. 233 Barrow Street. Good night. Don't you worry now. I'm a fool, gentlemen. A fool. Yes, Mr. Apopoulos. That is my last exhibit. Imagine. Nobody came. Even with a sign in the window, free iced tea. A hundred years from now, the world will catch up with me. Yes, Mr. Apopoulos. See if you can fix the back door lock. Yes, Mr. Apopoulos. So, you finally return to the scene of your crime. Don't you start, Apopoulos. I'm in no mood to swap subtleties with you. Not so high and haughty, my dear young lady. I've rented this apartment for 12 years to a lot of peculiar tenants, but none of them ever started a riot with the whole European continent before. Please, I'm tired. Arrests, jails. I only hope your sister had sense enough to give the wrong address. Well, imagine what bad publicity could do to this rat hole. What's that? I am fixing the back door lock for the next tenant. Oh, well, that's fine. It makes this studio a dead-end street. Well, listen, I don't hold grudges. If you got some money and you want to stay on here, I'm ready to talk business. Oh, you are, eh? All right, how about returning our month's rent? We're still dissatisfied. What are you talking about? Whoever said such a thing? I was one of the witnesses and I don't remember. Okay, witness, blow. Me? Blow? In my own building? Yeah, blow in your own building? Very well, I will blow. At 5 o'clock tomorrow, when your current lease expires, I am blowing back again. Your slip showing. Yeah. This is the place, Mother. Take, take it off, please.
Worrying like a fool. Worried, worried about what, Dad? Oh, you know your father. Is this where you live? What? Well, what's wrong with it? It's lovely, isn't it, Grandma? Yes. The atmosphere in Greenwich Village. You've no idea. Where's Eileen? Eileen? Oh, oh, out for the day already. Eileen, at ten o'clock, out for the day. Doing what? Oh. oh, did you ever see such a clucking old mother hen as he is? <laughs> now, what is she doing? Well, you know she. Uh, Nothing. I meant that she's, you know, keeping up uh, her friendships and making contacts. And... Uh, where is uh, it? Uh, thank you. Ruth. Oh, gee, Dad, you look great. Well, why is it you never wrote about anything definite? Well, you see, darling, it takes time. Oh, I've sent in a lot of material. One story in particular. I feel sure they'll publish it. Oh, but what about money? Have you earned any? Well, if not, you can't have a cent left. Oh, sure. We... Hello there. Oh, good morning, officer. Nice and quiet around here today. So far. Oh, uh, officer, this is my father. Uh-huh. Well, uh, thanks very much for looking in. Don't mention it. So long, Daddy. <laughs> What's all this about? I'm a rampant wreck from Georgia Tech and a heck of an engineer. A heck of 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 an engineer. Hi, you, Ruth. Um, uh, Rick, couldn't you come back later? Oh, there ain't gonna be no later. Helen and I are just leaving on a honeymoon. Honeymoon? Mother said her daughter couldn't get married without her being present, so <laughs> we had to be married all over again. <laughs> yeah, we were in kind of a tough spot. I, I had to kick out behind my own goalpost. <laughs> well, so long, baby. We'll be seeing you. Come on, Sugarfoot. <laughs> oh, Ruth, I want you to know how sorry I am for the way I acted. Oh, now, that's all right. Run right along. I mean, all the have things a good time. I said while the wreck was living down here. Yeah. Living down where? Down here. Well, here goes the bridal bouquet. Who's going to be next? April Fool! Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Ruth, bring your pals up later for a couple of snorts. There may be some people dropping in here. Looked like some kind of a parade. Well, they're people we met yesterday under rather unusual circumstances. Special. Dad! Grandma! No. Oh. Alina, how did uh, oh. what happened to um, May I present Captain Amadado, the Portuguese merchant marine, and, and his cadets? Oh, uh, your mom. I have come to write a most disastrous wrong. What? That's quite all right. Don't mention it. Told us for Shakespeare's time to disculpa. They say they are grossly sorry. As for myself, I will take up at once with the Mercy Marine the question of reparation. Reparation? Well, we wouldn't think of it. Uh, thanks. Uh, oh, oh, but she has spent the night in jail. Jail? What? And now, in grateful token, I present to you the ribbon of the Society of Mariners, second class. I wonder what you have to go through to get first class. <laughs> uh, Capital, no such repairs. I beg your pardon. Is it here that these careless boys have lost their hats? This is the place. Six caps coming up for the Merchant Marine from your good neighbors in Greenwich Village. Thank you. <laughs> Dad, you just die laughing when you hear what this is all about. Yes, yeah. I'm sure he will. Now, Walter, Walter, get hold of yourself. Uh, Dad, it isn't as bad as it sounds. Don't Honestly, bother, Ruth. You girls are coming home with me tonight. What? No, I can explain the whole thing. You piece. can make your explanations on the way back to Columbus. I'm going to get the bus yes. tickets. I'll be right back. Oh, I want dear. you to be ready to go. Walter, it's well known you're a dodo. Mother, 
I've heard the last from you or any Walter. of you. And so you don't stay here and make trouble, you're coming along with me. Why, well, Walter, I'm your mother. Let go of me. Oh, Walter, oh. you're just an old judge. Well, hey, I... Uh... Oh, yeah. Well, we might as well start packing. Dad'll be here any minute. I'm not going back. You're not? It isn't fair, not when things are just beginning to happen. You're right, Ruth. Well, I just started to know people. I'd have had a job in a week. Well, two weeks at the most. I, I began to feel I could really write. It's true the darn stuff didn't click, but... Well, for the first time, I was sure I could fight it through. I felt strong and confident. Oh, Ruth. I want a career. I may never feel this way again. As long as I live. And if we go back to Columbus, what'll people say? I'll tell you what they'll say. They'll say, did you hear the dirt about the show with girls? On account of them, we nearly had international complications. Oh, it's awful. <laughs> Ghastly. <laughs> no. We won't go back. We'll stay right here and fight it out. Won't we, Ruth? Uh-huh. Let's start packing, Eileen. Packing? Well, didn't you just say that you felt strong and confident? Yes, yes, I said it, but what's the use? We were a lick before we started. Well, what'd you have to get me all worked up for? I had to get it off my chest, didn't I? Well, it's horrible. That's what it is, just horrible. And after meeting the nicest person we've ever met in our lives, and the first person who really seemed to care what happened to my career... Mr. Baker? Yes, Bob Baker. Now, how am I going to call him up and say, Father's bundling me off home? Well, it really doesn't make any difference, Eileen. We didn't get to know him too well. What? I said it. I said we got to go home, so it doesn't matter now. Why, Ruth, I, I never dreamed. You like him, too. Strange as it may seem. Why, I never had any idea. And me that's had no experience with men. That's bad, isn't it? It's ridiculous. I'm just a goop. Eileen, stop packing. Dad said he'd be back any minute. Now, there you see. Yes. Oh, hello, Bob. Hi, oh, Sherwood. Packing? Why, well, what does this mean? We're going home. Yes, Father came. He, he wants us to go back for a little while. Yes, but wait a minute. When are you coming back? I don't think we'll ever be back. We're going home because we're a couple of flat, broke failures. Oh, Ruth. As a matter of fact, if Dad hadn't shown up, I guess we'd have had a thumb our way back to Columbus. Oh, now that can't be true. Oh, no? <laughs> I've got three extra pounds to prove it from eating potatoes and spaghetti. Can't even buy that much now. Well, you can buy a lot of spaghetti for $250. This, uh, this check seems to be yours. It has your name on it. $250. It's much too early in life to begin accepting charity, Mr. Baker. We won't take it. That's all there is to it. Thank you very much. Oh, I get it. You're going to read page 15 of this new issue of the Manhattan, and you're going to hold us up, eh? I suppose you're going to sue us for almost a million dollars. Page 15? What's on it? My sister Eileen by Ruth Sherwood. My sister Eileen... Oh, Why, that's me! That's me! Very clever, Miss Sherwood. Very clever. This was printed without your permission, so you got me over a barrel. Well, come on, what'll it settle for? A thousand, ten thousand, half a million? Why, Ruth, that's your story. That's your money. Oh, no, Bobby wouldn't sue. Why, $250 is just fine. Well, how did it happen? <laughs> how do you think it happened? <laughs> and if you want to know, several people have already phoned me to say that they consider this is the best human interest story of the year. Oh, Bob, and it's, it's all about me. Well, you're by far and away the best thing in it. I hope you don't mind, Eileen. Mind? Why, I'm famous. <laughs> now, come on. Are you going to accept this check, or am I going to have trouble with you? Oh, we'll accept it. Where the Dickens is 233 Barrow Street? How do you get into the place? That sounds like Mr. Craven. Uh -uh. Girl Here we go. Here anyway. Why, Mr. Craven? What? What do you want? Oh, there you are. Who put this story in? You? Yes. What about it? I want to talk to you. And to you, Miss Columbus. I'll be right down. How do I get into the you place? You stay where you are. The lady doesn't want to see you. I'll be right up. Pardon me. My dear young ladies, Jensen just told me the sensational news. I will not hear of your leaving. Why, I'm sure we can reach an understanding. Mm, I'm sure you think so now, Mr. Apopolis. But in the future, we certainly won't be living in a place where there are explosions under the beds. Ah, but wait, the blasting is over. 
I just got a letter from the city. Dreadfully sorry, Mr. Pappas, but somewhere uptown. A penthouse, perhaps. Eileen, wait a minute. What on earth are you talking about? Well, darling, we're certainly not going to go back home now. Well, I guess we aren't, but what's all this uptown talk about? What do you think we're going to do? Spend a check for a month's rent on a penthouse and then sit around on a bare floor and starve? Exactly. Who asked you? Eileen, we've got to be sensible, dear. By all means. Did you say the blasting is really over? In black and white. Please note. Blasting will terminate on September the 1st, today. And you're fixing this place up? New furniture, new paint, A1 stoves and plumbings. Venetian blinds. Venetian blinds? Why, Ruth, that sounds wonderful. And you know, this place has been awfully lucky. Yes, dear, I know, but let's talk it over with Mr. Baker. He'll be right back. And listen, rent's reduced to $30 a month. Th Ruth, did you hear that? $30? Ah, but at that figure, my dear ladies, must be a six months lease. On a completely friendly basis. I think we ought to do it. Certainly you ought to do it. How do you know he's going to do what he says? It's in the lease. There, you see. Oh, please, Ruth, he can't back out. We've got him where we want him. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm trapped. Oh, well. Congratulations, young lady. You have made a very wise decision. Aren't you ready yet, girls? The bus leaves in 40 minutes. Dad, we're not going. What? It's true. Ruth sold the story. Look, we're famous. Boom! Oh, I don't believe it. Congratulations, Mr. Sherwood. You have a pair of brilliant daughters. I am proud to have them as tenants for the next six months. Six months here? What does this mean? Oh, it's all settled, Dad. We just signed the lease. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, my goodness, Bob. What's that? I told you the blasting is over. Now they are starting to drill. Oh, you, goodbye. You, you, you cheat. Now I'm convinced. You girls have gone crazy. But oh, that settles it. You're coming right back to Columbus. Who's going back to Columbus? Not Ruth Sherwood. What's that? Ruth, since this morning, Mr. Craven has decided that there is room in his publication for some human material. Oh. And I have a contract here for all the future Eileen stories you'll ever write. Oh, Ruth! <laughs> and believe me, Mr. Craven, the Eileen stories will go on forever while I've got loads of material. I'll guarantee that. And uh, who are you? Well, I'm my sister Eileen. Why, Grandma, I'd have known you anywhere. I'm very glad to see you. Thank you. And this must be Mr. Sherwood. It's a great yeah. pleasure, sir. Now, see here. Well, what's happening here? Look, I made up my mind. Oh, no, no, sir. You can't take Ruth back to Columbus now. Why don't you see? She and I have a lot of work to do together. It may take years, maybe even a lifetime, to finish. I wonder if you understand, Mr. Sherwood. A lifetime? It's getting pretty clear to me. <laughs> well, in any case, certainly Eileen is coming home. Oh, no, no, Dad, she isn't. If I stay, Eileen stays, too. She has a career, you know. In fact, Mr. Craven must know a lot of people in the theatrical world. Of course he does. Oh, well, then, if he'll help Eileen get a start, I may sign this contract very soon. I don't see why not. It's obvious the young lady has extraordinary talent. Why, Mr. Craven, you're the nicest man I ever met. <laughs> well, this makes it just perfect. We ought to celebrate. Will you all be my guests for dinner? No, you're talking. But no spaghetti. Positively not. Hold on, Mother, not oh, so fast. Oh, to be still. Come on, let's go. Well, I'll take Mr. Craven. <laughs> and you've got me, Walter. And I'll take Ruth. Eileen! <laughs>